Hello and welcome everybody to this month's edition of Blue Beam Me Up. For those that have attended before, welcome back. And for those that are new, Blue Beam Me Up is a series of webinars that have been run by Brickstack and Brighter Graphics, two leading partners of Blue Beam in the UK. So this month's webinar will be focusing on design review. Design review is one of the most common uses of Bluebeam software. So today we're going to be running through some basic markup tools and also diving into some advanced features which allows you to track changes. My colleague Troy De Groot is joining us today and uh, if you've attended previous events you'll you'll know him. Uh, if you're new to Bluebeam, Troy De Groot is one of the leading Bluebeam certified instructors in the world. And over the past few months, he's been sharing his uh, best practice, his knowledge, his expertise, and some tips and tricks to help you get the most out of your Bluebeam software. For all attendees today, everybody's going to be on listen-only mode. But however, if you do have any questions, please use the chat facility on the right-hand side, and we'll endeavor to do our best to cover off as many questions at the end of the call. Otherwise, uh, enjoy the webinar, and I'm going to hand over to my colleague, Troy. Good afternoon, Blue Beamers. My name is Troy DeGroat with U Chapter 2, and I'm excited to partner with the team at Brickstech and Brighter Graphics to deliver world-class Bluebeam training and customization services so you can get the most out of your Bluebeam investment. I can't believe it's been a month already since we went over the batch tools in Bluebeam Review, Extreme, tools like Slipsheet, Hyperlinks, and other time-saving document modifications. Today, we're going to be looking at commonly used tools and features of review used for design review workflows from different markup tools, tracking statuses, and assigning responsibility. We'll show you how to reduce risk and increase communication through your markups. As always, remember to enter your questions into the chat as I go, and we'll be answering those, uh, as many of those as possible in whatever remaining time we have at the end. So in design review, we wanna make sure that we make clear and concise notes so that we're communicating with our team. And today I just wanna show you a couple of tools that are most common for doing that. Bluebeam is pretty intuitive. If you're looking for a markup tool, you're gonna to go up to tools markup and grab a text box. That's the one we'll start with. With this one, you simply just drag a box let go and then it's going to flash here asking you to type in your note so i'm just going to type in something and there it is a text with a box around it after this is placed you can move this around wherever you need that to be you can adjust the size of the box if you want that to look different completely adjustable how you want that to appear. The next one I'm gonna show you is the callout. So again, tools, markups, come down here to callout. These are basically the same tool, but with the callout, it's asking you to first point at something. So I'm gonna point at this door tag, come off to the side over here, place my note where I want it to be, and then it's gonna flash again, asking me what I want that note to say. What's nice about the callout is I can move this note around now and that leader or arrow stays attached to that. I'm not drawing a text box and then separately drawing an arrow to whatever I'm pointing at. Uh, that creates two markups in our markups list and just becomes more cumbersome to uh, modify or adjust. So we like the um, callout tool here so we can use those arrows that are attached to that markup and next week we're going to go through a bunch of tips and tricks so you don't want to miss next month um, we're going to show how to add leaders and things like that to these very quickly so make sure that you're uh, not only registering for that one but sharing it with your coworkers as well uh, the next thing I want to go over is the highlight so I'm going to go up to tools markups and our highlighter You'll notice in 
with the highlighter when I'm just in open space here the tip of my cursor actually looks like a highlighter so I can come in here and draw freehand whatever I want that to look like uh, on a vector based drawing once I get near any text you'll see that it switches over to a text selector and I can quickly drag over that text and it will highlight it for me what you're going to notice is that when we do that sometimes when you're in a congested area of the drawing and you try to highlight say this door tag here and you drag that all of a sudden it's going to blink and you're going to notice that it's going to highlight something that you don't want it to or perhaps let's do this again it will blink more often than not it ends up highlighting everything except that text box or that uh, bit of text there so we don't want to do that I'll show you guys a trick on how to fix that I'm just gonna undo a few things there go back to this area here and again tools markups H is going to be my keyboard shortcut for the highlight and this time instead of letting it grab the text I'm gonna hold my control key down and just draw a line through that text there so that's the trick for for that one uh, you'll run into that once in a while just do an undo and uh, do a search on Google for a highlighter issue in Bluebeam and hopefully you'll get to my blog post and show you how to fix that next we're gonna go down and uh, let's go to the dimension tool so this one's important I'm gonna um, be deliberate about how I introduce this one this dimension tool is under the markup section so it's a markup it's not an actual measurement so it's not going to give you a distance but let me show you what it does here so I can go dimension and I'm going to snap let's say to this grid come over here and snap to this one and it's asking me to type in my note so it didn't give me a distance but it's giving me an opportunity to type something in so this is where I would maybe say um, five feet on center and I would want that to be verify so I want somebody in the field to know that I think this is five feet on center but I'd like them to verify that these mullions here are five feet on center so you can put notes in there like that or put a dimension in there that it should be um, again that's text that you're typing in it's not giving you an actual dimension okay next we'll go to one of my favorites I guess it is my favorite uh, markup tool is our cloud plus with that one you can very quickly draw a box around an area let's just select these rooms here click and drag a box and then you can place the note separately off to the side and it will flash and ask you to type in that note so um, note in there click off of it and there you go so the reason this is one of my favorites is it because it combines uh, three different tools we have a cloud we have a leader and we have a text box and now this is all one markup if I move that text box the leader stays attached to it so I can move that wherever I want to and just lots of uh, really clean opportunities for this markup to um, display what you want it to showing the cloud and the note with that so those are some popular markup tools if you look underneath here obviously there's more uh, freehand pens notes um, different line drawing tools shapes as well uh, we'll go through a bunch of these next month uh, with tips and tricks as well so um, let's skip over those today some other common markups uh, once in a while you'll want to actually draw something to scale so here we have under our tools we have sketch to scale 
and you can do a rectangle, ellipse, polygon, or a polyline. So let's just pick on a rectangle. Maybe we want to do some sort of an office chair or an office table. You're going to click and do your start point. And then you'll notice that window pops up asking for the width. And I'm going to say this is, uh, I'm going to say three. And then I'm going to say, hit my tab. So it's three meters. Oops. Tab over to the height. And I want this to be one. And then I could even rotate it if I wanted to but I'm just going to hit enter and that's going to give me a three by one meter table in here. So whether it's a foundation, um, a slab or something like that, that you want to put in to scale on your markups for your design review, you can use those sketch to scale tools as well. Okay. Next let's talk about status. So, just as a reminder, all of the markups that you do on your drawings are going to create a line item in your markups list. So down here, we have a list of each one of these markups. If I click on here, it's going to highlight that markup up in the drawing and so on. If I click on these, it's going to bring me to that. One. So this is a one to one relationship. If I delete from the list here, it's going to delete it from the drawing and vice versa. If I delete this one, it's going to come off the list. Okay. So in a design review process, if I put this note in and I give these drawings over to my designer, they're going to go into the CAD software and they're going to update the drawing with my note that I'm placing here. Once they're done, with that markup, they can come over here to the markups list in the status call. And if you double click, it's going to bring up some options. And I'm going to, let's say I'm the technician, I'm going to go in and say that I completed that markup. When I do that, I have custom settings in here so that I turn it yellow. So a lot of common practice is once you're done with a markup, you highlight it yellow to indicate that you're done with it. I built that into the custom status. So all of these markups, when I select these, I do that change, I double click and I mark it completed. You'll notice that it not only turns that yellow as if it were highlighted, but it also puts in the status that it was set to complete by me um, and the time and the date that I did that. Okay, so you can start to build in accountability to those markups as everyone signs off on each individual markup. Once I get that back from the designer saying they made all those changes, I can look at a clean print and I can come in here and double click myself and mark this accepted. When I do that, that means it was back checked. And for this one, I, um, I wanted it to turn green. So I'm saying, it was back checked with it being green. I can also, let's say this one, I don't agree with, they didn't do it correctly. I can reject that. And I set this one up to be red. So it's going to draw attention to it. It's going to be that dark red. So we can build in, we've got common statuses in here. And the only thing I did to customize those was add the colors so that I'm replacing the highlighters in a paper workflow. Okay, the next thing I want to do is go through the responsibility. So uh, you can set a responsibility for different markups. What I did was build a custom column here called responsibility. I'll show you where that setting is. If I go into the markups list, columns, come down here to manage columns. And then up here, I'm going to click on the custom columns tab. I built a responsibility custom column. If I look at the, um, the makeup of that, I created a choice column and I entered in different choices for who I might assign these markups to. I say, okay, and okay. And then I'll show you here with these markups that are left. 
uh, the cloud plus let's say I want um, Darren to work on that one I can come over here double click set it to Darren let's say I want um, Sean to work on this one I'm going to set that I think I'll give him this one too Teresa is going to work on that one and I'll take care of that one so I can set up the responsibility for these different markups as well with that custom column what's nice about that is now when each of us go in to do these changes in the drawings I can filter this list to show only the markups that were assigned to me I click off of it it's going to give me my uh, minimal list so it's just going to show me the ones that I was assigned to and all the rest of these markups because they've been filtered out are grayed out not drawing any attention okay so Sean would come in here and click on his name and turn off mine and he would see all of his markups that he needs to go through and mark complete and he's done so let's do a couple more common markups here uh, we're, we'll go through some of the measurement tools so measurement tools are can be found under the tools menu down here under measure we've got all of those listed here I actually prefer to use my measurement panel over here on the right side it looks like a ruler when I click on that it expands my measurement panel um, that's going to be the case so just to show you the um, under the review menu if we go to profiles I'm using the review advanced profile and that is one that comes standard with Bluebeam if you select that then you should see the same interface basically the tools on the left tools on the right and so that's where that ruler will be found with my measurement panel so a lot of times as you're doing your markups and for your design review you might want to take measurements and uh, help you make decisions on what those markups might look like your comments uh, so the first thing that we need to do always is calibrate I'm going to click on that button there are presets in here I guess I should point that out first if uh, you have different scales in here if you know the scale it was printed at you can select that um, I recommend all my students to never do it that way because we don't know if it was printed accurately we don't know it could have been printed on a half size sheet of paper or something like that so I will always tell my students to go to calibrate it's going to tell us to select two points of a known dimension so I'm going to say OK and then I'm going to come over here and select a grid here so I'm going to snap to that grid with that blue box pick come down here and pick on the grid down here and it's telling me that this distance on the piece of paper is one foot I'm going to update that to 30 and then I'm going to apply the scale and now all the dimensions that we do after that are going to be accurate we can double check that right away with our length measurement again come in here and snap into those grids and it's going to give me that 30 feet so now I can go and get measurements of rooms uh, if I want to measure from this side to this side here to here I can start to snap in there and get these different measurements that goes for area as well if I want to do an area measurement zoom in here select on my area measurement tool and I'm just going to snap into this corner and drag snap there and it gives me my square footage if we're doing any sort of linear dimension um, maybe you're looking at uh, exit route or something like that you might have to find the length of the path from this room down the hallway 
just draw a rough line here. And let's say we're going out the front door. That tool there is going to give us the length of each segment and the total length of that exit route. So that's how far they have to walk to get out of that office out the front door. So we can start to not just mark things up, but um, be smart about what uh, we're marking up because we can see those distances things like that. So let's say we've marked up the drawings. We've given those to our designers. They've gone in and made all of those changes to the CAD files. They've marked everything complete. So all of these markups are going to end up green with that status. Uh, what they're going to do then is print a clean drawing. And a tool that we can use to help us backtrack is actually if we go under, actually, sorry, I'm going to open up a couple different drawings. Close this one. Make sure I close my side panels so I don't uh, make my workspace too small. So here I've got Rev A and Rev C over here. So those changes have been made and uh, I need to back check those. So I can very easily do that with the compare and overlay tools. So first I'm going to start with the compare documents. I click on that it's going to load the two drawings I have open I don't have to have them open I could just navigate to those in the different folders that they're in so you just make sure that you're comparing one to the other and I'm going to click OK and it's going to look at these two drawings pixel by pixel and create a third document with the diff extension up here I split my screen again vertical down here so I can have all three next to each other and you'll see here that it actually clouded all the changes in the drawing. So here we had a rounded wall. They changed that and squared it off. They clouded that, those changes. They also saw that they added light fixtures in here and clouded those. Coming over here, you can see that they removed the bathroom and uh, put a door between those two different rooms it did a really good job of clouding those as well so once you get those clean drawings back from your designer you run your document compare you should have a cloud around everywhere where you had a markup all the markups that you were requesting changes in the drawings should have resulted in changes in the pixels so uh, that's a tool that you can use to find those and make sure that changes were made. Another one is the overlay. So to make sure what changed uh, between the two, we can go to the document menu, go to overlay pages. This one's going to assign red to Rev C and green to Rev A. I'm going to click OK. And it's going to put these two on top of each other like an old light table and create a third document again called overlay split my screen vertical and now you can see exactly what changed so you can see the revisions that were made to those cad files light fixtures that were added walls that were changed and so on you're seeing one version on top of the other everything that's black here didn't change and then you see red is revision c and green is revision a and it'll actually even put those on layers. So if you come over here to our layers panel, you can see Rev C. I can turn that off and just look at A or turn off A and look at C. So that's going to help us see if those changes were indeed made the way that we wanted to, uh, the way that we wanted those to be made. A couple other workflows we might use in design review are um, pointing to standard details or things like that. So let's say I want to do something specific to this concrete wall down here. I might grab my Cloud Plus and cloud this corner. 
come up here and paste my note or place that there. Um, see standard detail. And then what I could do is select that markup, right click, and I'm going to go to capture from file and I'm going to go out to where I have my images saved, select that standard detail and click OK. Now I get this nice little camera lens instead of a big detail on my sheet and this is going to be a reference to whoever I'm communicating with. So see standard detail. If I click on that, it's going to open up my flipbook and show me the standard detail for uh, how we want that wall built. So you can attach standard details that way, pulling those from your CAD libraries and things like that. So I'm going to close out of that. Another way to do that is perhaps um, you have a detail on another job, a past job. Let's see if we can find a good detail. Let's try this one here. So we've got our standard um, isolated footing with a pier and a steel column above that. If I want to pull this into my drawing as a base to start with, I can come up to Edit, Snapshot. G is going to be the shortcut key for that one. And I'm going to click and drag a box around this detail on my old project. It's going to flash blue and take a picture of it, putting it on my clipboard. Now I can go back to my current project, right click and paste, and it'll put that detail on my sheet. So that is a great way to reference uh, another project, a detail that I want. Maybe you put in a uh, text box underneath this and put in, you know, this was project number whatever so they know where to go find that detail detail 5 on 0 0.2 in this project number and then on top of that detail you could go and use your text boxes and your call outs and whatever else you need to to mark up what's different on this project compared to the other one if there are any differences so that's another way that we can communicate um, using old data and pulling it in to our next project. Well, that's what I have for you today. A little quicker one this time around. I hope you captured some ideas to reduce risk and increase communication during your design review process. I always have a lot of fun with these presentations. This month is no different. If you have any questions regarding training or customization services for your company, don't hesitate to reach out to our team. Of uh, all the webinars so far, uh, you don't want to miss next month's. We're going to go, we're going to pack that one with as many tips and tricks as possible in those 35 minutes. Um, so you're going to want to invite your peers and make sure that everybody you know is joining that one. Um, this one was a little bit shorter today because I wanted to save some of those markup tools for next week or next month, sorry and include the tips and tricks with those as well. So everyone who registered for today's webinar will receive a follow-up email with a registration link for next month. Uh, be sure to grab a seat. We'll have some fun sharing some really cool examples proving Bluebeam is way more than a PDF viewer. Uh, thanks for hanging out this afternoon. I saw the team was answering a few questions along the way. Uh, are there any more questions or things you'd like to add before we sign up? Yeah, hi. Thank you, Troy. Um, great webinar as per usual. Um, we have had a few questions. Um, there's, a, there's a couple that I'm going to take um, offline and answer directly. Um, but Troy, if um, you're, you're free right now, we can answer um, maybe one of the questions that, that will work well in a live presentation. So um, one of the questions we've had is, does the capture translate to PDF, um, which has come in from one of the users? So um, you could uh, 
lend a hand to answer that one, Troy. That would be great. Okay, Troy must uh, be offline at the moment, so um, we'll actually come back and answer that question offline as well. So um, I think that finishes this month's... Oh, there he is. Um, Troy, we had a question about um, capturing... Um, does the capture translate to PDF? That's something you can help with. Sure. So, sorry, I was muted there. Um, so the capture is going to be... It's going to be an image. When you bring that in, you can flatten that if you want to, or um, at, unless they're referring to the snapshot that we did at the end there and pasted that onto the sheet. Um, it's coming in as a markup, not necessarily a PDF, it's, but it lives in the PDF. So when you, whenever you capture and attach an image, like that, uh, your PDF becomes kind of a container that holds those images inside of it, if that makes sense. Um, but as soon as you flatten it, it becomes part of that PDF. If you send that with the captures attached to the markup, like we showed, if you send that to somebody that has Bluebeam, they'll see that little um, camera lens indicating that there's a attached image. Uh, if they don't have Bluebeam review, then they won't see that little image. Um, so just a, a warning there. Okay, thanks, Troy. Um, as, uh, as mentioned earlier, we've had a few other questions which um, we'll take offline. If any of you are left on the webinar would like to ask some questions, the best email for us is probably contact at brightergraphics.com where we'll be happy to answer your questions. So um, that finishes this month's webinar. Um, as we mentioned, the next webinar is Markup Tips and, Tips and Tricks, which is on the 25th of October. And we'll send invitations out to everybody that attended today. And if you think you know of anyone that would benefit from, from the session, feel free to send on. Thank you for everyone attending and look forward to doing it all again next month. Have a great day.